kicking barefoot kicker. Oh. I got a chill thinking about that. Here's a snap, comes back. DeRosa goes forward, straight up in the air, way up in the air, hits at the 40 and bounds back. And Piello stops at about the 38-yard line. Paramus Kaplan takes over him. Great field position with three minutes and 15 seconds to go in the half. They trail Bergen Castle, 20 to 14. <laughs> Crowd on the other side is hooping and hollering. Campanile, keeper, two yards, maybe three, brings up a second and seven. John, fumble maybe, maybe a fumble. Oh, there it is, there's the... The one referee and another big break that time. Oh, let's see what the referee say. Nobody, I haven't seen a signal yet. Yeah, I did. The one referee. There yes, it is. The is. official one. <laughs> Bergen Catler gets the second turnover. It's Campanile on the quarterback keeper. Keeps the ball was taken from him. He just dropped it, but whatever it was. Bergen Catler takes over. John? Well, when you're in the middle there with those big guys, you got to hold on to that ball and that time. The ball was kicked out and a recovery of the fumble. And here we go again. Momentum changes. Damage's on the wing. This Nick's on the outside. Hands off again to Tierney. Circles his right side. And hit but stopped. And a flag comes flying in. And usually that's holding when it comes in from the referee back there. John? Yeah, it was a late flag that time. And it looks like holding against Bergen Catholic. They couldn't believe it, but it is. Oh, flip. It's even worse. That's 15 yards. Twenty-yard line. Ball, balls on the twenty-yard line. First and twenty-five. Kinney in motion. Fabish has, and Fabish is met in the hole by number seventy-seven, Brian Perone, six-two, two hundred eighteen linebacker. Well, and also number seventeen, Vito Campanile that time, on a block, on the great tackle, lost for a couple yards. Top Ramos got the call timeout. They're gonna want the ball back one more time before the half ends. That's correct. Yeah. There's your plane. Where's that plane going to, John? Any plane that's, where it's warmer and That's going to Orlando. Well, Disney World. <laughs> oh, it's space for two, please. Come on back. <laughs> and there we go. We're getting pulled back. This is the crowd. Here's the mob scene here. We were just talking about it. Everything we expected in this game. And more. <laughs> and more to come. say that. Uh, yeah, and more to come. More to come. I'm losing my voice here. McDermott and Fabish are split left and right. DeRosa, good fake. He's looking for McDermott. McDermott's well open. Fabish is open. It's Fabish on. Oh, it was good. And Fabish has gone to the 30. Still on his feet. Across the 30 to 28. 28. So we started on the 18. 32 <laughs> and 22. 54 yards. Mark Fabish. McDermott was open going down the sideline. Fabish was over open crossing the middle and the rosa put the ball right on the money and what a tight spiral <laughs> flying up there he was trying not to that airplane what a beautiful throw the rosa made up for that throw he made uh, just a little while ago to the franco is a little wide incomplete mcdermott to the left fabish on the wing tierney in the slot here goes tierney Tierney's met, Tierney is met in the hole at about the uh, 25. Yeah, give him about four yards on the carry. No, Tierney picks up, ball is spotted, the ball is five. Oh, Nunzio Capanelli was credited for that tackle. You know, his little brother. He's the sophomore and the uh, heir apparent at quarterback for next year for Paramus Catholic. Tierney's in the slot. Usually they come off that. Yeah, here he comes. The Rosa looks. The Rosa looks. They're looking. Throws. Intercepted. I tell you what. He's going to the sideline. Marlino's gone down. Only one man. He's down. He's to the 15, 10, 5. Touchdown. Touchdown. 95 yards, John. Unbelievable play that time. And there's a mistake in the score. <laughs> And the people in Paramus County are going crazy right now. Officially, officially that would be what? It's, it's got to be uh, from the line of scrimmage, right? Well, he caught the ball about the five-yard line. In a book, will go as an 80-yard 80 80 yard touchdown. There's a flag on the play. It's going to be unsportsmanlike for running on the field. But I tell you what, after a run like that, 
So, Bart Molino, a junior, 5'11", 155 pounds, quarterback from Munachi, New Jersey, just electrified the Paramus Catholic people into a frenzy. And it's 20 to 20 with 53 seconds to go. And there's still another half to play. John? That's why the ball's been backed up some 15 yards. Kevin Ellie looks, looks, still looks, still looks, fires! And we're gonna have interference, it looks like. They're gonna call, had, they're gonna call interference on Fabris that he pushed. Uh, I thought it was a good tackle. I thought it was a tackle. We should I don't understand that one. Can we play that back on our film here? Let's get a, we'll look at that. Let's see I, what the play's gonna be. Holy shit. I don't agree. Unbelievable. I don't agree with that one. Let's see what they're gonna call here now. I felt there was a good block. A good, was he input that down? All right, they are calling the PAT good. We believe that he went in. Noble went in and he caught the ball, pushed out of bounds, and they called an interference, but the interference penalty was declined by Paramus Catholic. The point after is good, and Paramus Catholic, with 53 seconds, takes a 22 to 20 lead over Bergen Catholic. John? Well, you know, I'm a person with a few words. Yeah, I know. In this particular case, I'll tell you what. I don't believe that the two-point conversion, the individual was not across the line, number one. Number two, I felt that was a good tackle made by number five, Mark Favish, and it should not have been a two-point conversion. <laughs> so, the ball comes off the uh, tee as the wind picks up a little bit. So, John, I must have mentioned before Waller kicks, um, Campanile's been getting on Campanile has been getting an awful lot of time back there to throw the ball. He's looking one, two, three receivers back to his first and then back to his second. He's got a lot of time back there. What he's doing, he's rolling out left, rolling out right, and he's creating time for him. See what he has, a close to 20. And close to 30. And he's brought down about the 33 yard line wherever uh, Bergen Catholic will take over with 46 seconds to go. And there's time with these teams. Yeah. There's time with a second left on the clock. That's it. An eternity. You can have an, you can play three games with 46 seconds with these two teams. Split all over the place. The Rose is back. The Rose looks, looks, looks. Now he's running, looking. Lose one man. Still looks. Still on his feet. Still on his feet. And knocked out of bounds. Boy, he held that ball for a long time, looking and looking at. Well, he was. He knew that he could make the first down or close to it, and he also wanted to make sure that he can go out and be able to stop the clock, 28 seconds. And that, that play took almost 20 seconds of uh, him. So we had, where we are we? We have 46 seconds to go on the clock? 18 seconds. 18 seconds. Yeah. There's timeout on the field. First down that time, Larry. The Rose was able to pick it up. Boy, he held that ball a long time, faking to throw and run, fake to throw and run, fake to throw and run. GG wow. went down the sideline. Well, he wants to score before the halftime. So, sure. The Rose is back, throws to Fabish. Fabish has, and Fabish is knocked out of bounds. Good first, first down. down. Short of the 45-yard uh, line. Uh, 10 yards on that, on that reception, looks like, and only five seconds that time. So that was a quicker play. I'll tell you what, John, one more play, two more plays like that, and you're uh, looking for a field goal. Then Ruoff can kick the ball. Although you got McDermott and uh, Fabish back there. Looks like an audible right here. Yeah, and they're going deep. Um, Paramus Catholic is really dropping back. They're back on the 20 yard line. Here's a throw off. Wide open. Piella got it. Oh, what a hit. What a smack for Buski on, on Piella. And the ball is inside the, uh, on the 25 yard line. What a 15 seconds to go. So Piella takes a smack. 15 yards on the reception and a little sore head. Or maybe Woo! a couple of, a little headache. Okay, we'll be back for the final 15 seconds. <laughs> we have McDermott out. Cavaluzzo's in the slot. He's the tight end. He's in the slot. Fabish is out to the right. The Rose is back. The Rose looks, 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 fires! Oh! Incomplete. Yeah. I'll tell you what, yeah, that, that could have been a flag right there as the ball was thrown, Larry. ADA was destroyed over the middle, and the ball was up in the air. No flag, though. 
10 seconds to go. Second and 10. Possibly one more play and then possibly a field goal. If you're thinking along those lines. Well, that would make it 23-22 if it's converted. So McDermott. Cavaluzzo out to the left. Cavaluzzo's in the slot. Fabish is to the right. DeRosa's calling signals. Here's your play. DeRosa looks, looks, looks. Goes to Fabish down the sideline. Fabish is. There's a play. There's a play. I got a hold. I got a hold. On the corner. It's going to be a hold. It's going to be a hold. Looks like Bart Molino made that interception and run some 95 yards. Maybe call for holding. Let's see. Yeah, what happened in that case, they were throwing to a spot. Interference. Yeah. He just grabbed him. He just slowed the uh, approach to get the ball. Great throw that time by DeRosa. So they're going to call pass at the field. Let's see where they're going to spot that ball. I think. Well, there's six seconds to go. There was an interference play. The ball is going to be marked at the there. shy of the 19. So they're on the 19-yard line. Well, all right. On the six. You're right. 19 plus 10 is going to be a... Well, now it's on a 19 plus 10. 29. Here's the kick. Up. High enough. Deep enough. <laughs> good. 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 One second to go in the half. And the field goal. And Catholic, 23. I'm sorry. Bergen Catholic, 23. <laughs> around the Catholic, 22. And they came down and moved with 53 seconds down the field, John. And we got a one second to go in the half. And so the, game, the half's not over. You never know. 23 to 22. <laughs> what else could happen today? <laughs> uh, and the sun's out. About it. 36 seconds. One point thirty-six of a second left. How you like that, huh? Do we go fair catch? Fair catch. Uh, and yeah, then you have one more play. Anything is possible here. No, they're going to make sure of that. And his knee is down. And that should end it. And that should end the first half. An exciting, exciting first half. We've seen it all. Long passes, runs, defensive, interception, run backs, field goals, and it all comes down after 24 minutes to play. Bergen Catholic beat Columbus Catholic. Oh, 322. Wait a minute. <laughs> Bring it all back because we have a flag on the play. Yeah, bringing the players from the locker room. <laughs> Let's see what the ref says here. We got to look at the ref. First. Personal foul against Perez and personal foul against Bergen Catholic. Right. Denied. Both denied. The play don't everything pass to each other. So now we can go to our halftime festivities. 23-22, Bergen Catholic over Paramus Catholic in the parochial League North Championship being played here at the Harry B. Cook Jr. Memorial Field in Union, New Jersey. for the beginning of uh, the second half. It's an ex exciting game between Bergen Catholic and Paramus Catholic. Uh, Bergen Catholic leads 23-22. It's a very close game. And John Francola was, has been going crazy here at halftime getting these statistics. I tell you, like an accountant with a uh, panic machine. But John will take you through and tell you how, how the game went statistically. Let's first of all go to uh, Paramus Catholic, the visitors. Vito Campanile was seven for nine for 156 yards. Rushing, uh, Lopez had seven carries for 52 yards. Of course, you had three touchdowns, one for Noble. Great catch and run. Lopez, a three-yard run. And, of course, Merlino, the 80, about 80-yard 80 interception for his touchdown. 
and then you had the infamous two-point conversion, which uh, they were given, which I don't agree with, but that's fine. So that's a total of 22 points. As far as the Bergen Catholic, uh, Mark DeRosa, seven for eight passing for 225 yards. Wow. That's a tremendous stat. Oof. Running, we had um, Bill Cheney, 1351 yards, Josie Franco, four for 13 yards, and Mark Fabish, three for nine. Again, touchdowns by, we had Dave Cavaluso, 40-yard touchdown reception. You had 69 yards from Mark Fabish, and a running touchdown by Jody Franco, one yard and a score. And of course, you had that field goal. How long was that field goal, Larry? 29 20. yards by um, Ruoff. Mark Ruoff. Uh, Mark Ruoff, 29 yards, just at the end of the uh, second half. With left with one second to go, put the uh, Bergen Catholic uh, Crusaders ahead of the Paladins from Paramus Catholic by one point. And somewhere in the second half, lo and behold, <laughs> came out and is bathing this field here at Union, New Jersey. Uh, we'd like to take time out now again to thank the uh, Touchdown Club here at uh, Bergen Catholic for um, getting us in to do the game, WCTV. They get us in to do the game. They were very generous. Uh, they gave us spots in the uh, press box and they. Um, uh, provided all the all the equipment and all the stuff we needed getting in here. I want to thank uh, them, especially Ed Skiba, who's I think he's the president of the Touchdown Club. Who worked tirelessly yesterday, called my house a couple of times, letting us know what was going on. It looked like the game may never have been played, but uh, this field is amazing, and those those fathers that are that work and the parents that work for Bergen Catholic, unbelievable, getting this field ready. I'd like to thank them personally and very one for WCTV. Thank you. I guess they would be the producers of this show, right, John? Absolutely. Three turnovers, by the way, in the first half. Uh, two interceptions, a fumble, and you have it all. Well, folks, sit back, relax. It's going to be a great second half. We're all kickers up in the air. It's going to come to short, taken by uh, Stanley Gerzik, a uh, lineman. He's a uh, linebacker from Garfield. Stop. First and 10 for the Paladins. Uh, ball's on the 35 yard line. Paladins will take over. The center is Bill Benson. Guards are Mark Sesnack and Marky Mason. Mason made a nice block in the first half. Everybody plays well. Uh, Kevin White and Felix uh, Mazurk, Mazurk is the, uh, are the tackles. Wide receivers is Dave Noble, Zach Clark, Joey Wallach, Chuck Mazarone, and Dave Lopez running the ball now off uh, left tackle for three yards and it'll bring up a second down and seven. John? Well you had three yards on that play and of course number 88 one of the linebackers uh, Dave Cavaluzzo on the stop and Lopez gets three yards to begin. I'm trying to get my get my wire around here. Are we all, we're all set huh? I tell you what John I can't take a, a half like this. The old heart's uh, <laughs> pumping away here. Again, the run and shoot of Paramus Catholic. Kevin Ely's back. Kevin Ely looks, looks, looks. Wow. Oh, he's got Zach Lock to about the 50-yard line, John. <laughs> Wide open play that time as the linebacker, Dave Cavaluzzo, came back to pick him up. And you know, with this run and shoot, for people who have never seen it before <laughs> in, in the high school level, it's a reaction play where the receivers make the reaction, the quarterback throws to them. So it's not a core play down and out or down and in. They make that decision depending on the defense amazing how these kids can read the defenses and make breaks and Campanelli knows which way they're going to break and waits for it and then throws the ball and he delivers it. He delivers it and they accept delivery. Clearly calling signals. Quarterback keeper inside and Campanelli down to the 35 yard line. And it's a 10 yard gain. We were, we were expecting Kevin Lee to do a little, uh, at least you were telling me coming up that you expected Kevin Lee to uh, do an awful lot of quarterback draws. Well, you know what it is, we had this little bird that came down and told us, but uh, that's his fifth uh, quarterback draw that he's had today for eight, 18 yards for uh, Vito Campanile, stopped by Joe Piella, number 19. First and 10 for Paramus Catholic. Kevin Lee's back. Good protection. Fires! Four, Mazzarone, and I had a bounce, I had a bounce. Ball is dropped. Now, Mazzarone is down saying, I caught it. Not that I <laughs> caught it. But there are about four referees around, four officials around him saying, no, no. <laughs> he kept the wallet in there, and he kept 
Um, Mazzarone did a block, and he had plenty of time. He I'm sorry, he had uh, Wallach and um, somebody else in there. Oh, Lopez, Lopez in there. Lopez the block. And, and of course, plenty of time. so Wallach is in the slot to the right, Mazzarone slot to the left. Lock and Noble are out in the flank. Second and ten. Here for the lead, Rush throws out here to Lopez. Lopez has got a block. Lopez is still on his feet. He'll lose one man. He's down the sideline. Go to the goal line. Knocked out of bounds at the five. Fumble. Fumbled. Fumbled. I was going to say he's out of bounds. He fumbled the ball after he was out of bounds. John, they make people miss these uh, running backs. Well, 30 yards on that screen. On a five-yard line or six-yard line and um, almost a, uh, a clip, but it wasn't called. But they were able to pick up the blocks. The uh, offensive line and the wide receivers blocked downfield blocked beautifully, and that made Lopez run down. And then Lopez uses natural skills to elude a couple of tackles and gets down to the five-yard line, six-yard line, where it's first and goal from the six for the Paladin. First time we've seen this in motion. He throws out here through the hands of Lopez. That's the first time we saw Lopez in motion. He's always either there, taking the hand off, or blocking. Well, again, it's a good theory behind that. By putting him on the outside like that, a one-on-one, -on -one, <coughs> Mr. Lopez, a la Gale Sayers, can make some moves and does his dancing. So this half, you have two for four for uh, Vito Campanile for 45 yards. Now we have Mazarone out, Noble in the slot, and Wallach inside of him. There goes Campanella, the keeper, Campanella goes to the goal line, and in, touchdown. touchdown. So Vito Campanelli around the left side for a touchdown. So a 9.53, Paramus Catholic takes the lead. And this is what the coaching staff was saying, that they were going to run Vito Campanile behind the, uh, the line and six yards in the touchdown. 28-23 now. As and the uh, ball uh, keeps bouncing back and forth here to lead. Or the seesaw. That's right, seesaw. Seesaw. 28-23. Imagine if you said teeter-totter. What's teeter-totter? <laughs> what, what's teeter same thing. Oh, same thing? <laughs> How do you know all this? <laughs> Two points now for uh, Paramus Catholic. They're going for it. Kimberly's back, looks, throws, no good. Intended for Noble. And the PAT failed. So, 9.53 to go in the third quarter. Paramus Catholic now takes a 28-23 lead over Bergen Catholic. Just announced the 50-50 winner. Kick is going to be way short. Pissonix uh -huh. fumbles it. The ball's rolling around. And, yeah, and let's see. Everybody says they got it. We're going to see what yeah. it is now. I have it. What do you got, John? I got Bergen Catholic recovered. All right. Bergen Catholic gets it. Whoa. Right on about the 40-yard line. And you know what? That wind kick <laughs> can do it every time. You think that was a design play, the way the ball goes up very short, comes down, and you have a hard time feeling it, feeling the punt. So Bergen Catholic will take over first and ten. The center is Ray Ramundi. Tack uh, guards are Ben Tonin and Angelo Odo. Tackles John Matisic, Brian Brosnan. Dave Cavaluzzo is the tight end. Tim McDermott is the wide receiver. Mark Fabish the wide receiver. The quarterback is Mark DeRosa. Phil Tini and Joe DeFranco are the running backs. Joe DeFranco. Well, what a to spin. 50-yard line. Pick up a five, John. Double spin that time by Joe DeFranco, and that was Joe's fifth carry for today's game. Gain of five yards. So that's going to bring up a second down and five yards to go here. <laughs> Campanile, he don't make the tackle. Got a lot of tackles. The quarterback, linebacker. John Madden really like him. Look at him. He's all dark and all dirty. <laughs> Pull that dirt. Fabish is in motion. DeRosa fakes, fakes, looks, now he runs. runs. And he's knocked out of bounds. About Get four up. yards. Yeah, it's going to bring up third uh, short, I think. Looks like uh, about two. Third and two. 
Tedesco was the one who knocked him out of bounds. So it's going to be third. I said short. Make a call of third and three. <coughs> Ball's on the 47-yard line of um, Paramus Catholic. They lead 28-23 in the championship game here for the Pro QLA. Fabrics is on the wing. And the tournament is out to the right. Tierney. Hit in the hole, falls forward. It's going to be a little short, John. Yeah, but I think uh, it's time to go for this one, I'd say. And that was number 51 for who made the stop, Kenneth Keeter, who got into the, into the open hole and stopped play. So it's going to bring up a fourth down and looks like four, John. We'll call it fourth and four. The ball is on the 47-yard line. Let's call it fourth and three. They're on yeah. the 47. The ball's got to get to the 45. Big play here for Bergen Catholic. DeRosa's calling signals. DeRosa fakes. DeRosa runs. Looks. Throws. Yeah. Defanko, what a has. play. Franco's down the sideline. What a block. What a block. 30-yard line. John? I love that block. ADA. Cavaluzzo extending his body for the block. Gain of about 30 yards. So a third and a fourth and three. A little flip pass to DeFranco, and DeFranco gets down to the 30-yard line. Inside the 30. Ball is smarter to the 27-yard line. With a Crusaders, a Bergen Catholic will take over. First and ten. Great call by Fred Stengel. Well, he faked the TNE and DeFranco was wide open in the flat. Babbage Set. left, McDermott right. Eye back. Tierney again. Tierney gets to the outside and knocked out. <laughs> He's still not down. And finally, Tierney goes down. Knocked out of bounds by number eight. That's uh, Brian Fabluzzi. Got four yards to, for Bill Tierney that time. Somebody's hurt. And there's an injury ben, on the field. Looks like Ben Tony. Looks like Tony injured his angle. So we'll be back in just a moment. Let's set the stage. Seven minutes, 43 seconds to go in the first quarter. Paramus Catholic leads Bergen Catholic 28-23 for the Division A Parochial Championship here in Union, New Jersey. We don't know if it's a knee or an ankle, but we'll see who, we'll see who takes his place. I can't see the number down there. Hand off to Tinney. And Tilly gets to about the 20-yard line. About eight, yeah, Tom, seven yards. Tom Miller's in for uh, Tonin. About seven yards on that run. So it's third down and three for the Crusaders. The ball is just outside the 20-yard line. Fabrich is in motion. The Rosa hands off to the Franco. There's a hole, and the Franco. Oh, great stop. Nice stop there. 32 by Merlino. Bob Merlino. First down. It's Merlino saved uh, maybe a little more damage. Well, without a doubt, he saved the touchdown because he was wide open outside at that point, Larry. Looks like uh, Tonin has an ankle injury. Ball's on the 17-yard line. Tierney and DeFranco on the pro set. Fabish is in motion. Hand off to DeFranco. And DeFranco gets to about the 10-yard line. John? Well, once again, you know, he keeps waiting for his blocking that time. Great defense. Gain of about, what, six yards for uh, Joe DeFranco. Tackled by Merlino. And Merlino, we keep calling his name over and over again here for Paramus Catholic. Second and we're going to fly. We're giving him five. The ball's at the 11-yard line. <laughs> Fabrice is in motion. And we have a flag. He's going to be motioned out there, John. Yeah. Dead ball foul. Well, let's see what that's going to be. I don't know. He sees clapping. I don't know. Could have been encroachment. Oh, I don't say that word. 
Uh, you will not encroach me. <laughs> I don't like the word encroaching. And Here we first down. Here we put offsides back in. Can I write to the state and make it offside? First Again? down. Wait, John, hold on. First gonna, down on a five. We write, why, 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 I'm going to write to the state and change that word. I like it. Offside sounds like football. Encroachment sounds like it's a war starting. <laughs> <laughs> That's to prevent the war. Yeah, well, you encroached in my country. The ball's a first down, the ball's marked on the five-yard line, so it's first and goal. This Nick's in, he's on the uh, left end now, tight. Babbage is in motion from right to left, the ball's on the five, first and goal. DeFranco with a great block by a beautiful block by Tierney. DeFranco blows in, John. Well, that was a perfect thing. It, you know, Tierney's been carrying the ball in the first, first half, in the second half. They switch things and throws a great block and he gives a high step and a while a little gallon more move for a score. So now it's 29-28 as Bergen County takes the league back. What was that called? Tita Totter? Tita Totter? Seesaw? Seesaw? Whatever you want to call it. To and fro? Yin and yang? <laughs> Encroachment offsides? <laughs> <laughs> look at that, they give you a dirty look. <laughs> it was a dirty look with a smile by the referee. Bergen Cattle's going for two. We have trips to the right with Piella, McDermott, Pavish. DeRosa's calling signals. DeRosa rolls to his right. He could run looking, it in. He could looking, run it in. Looking, flips. <laughs> out of bounds. Oh, no. Out of bounds. To Pioli, he caught it when they say one foot was out of bounds. So the PAT for Bergen Catholic fails. And Bergen Catholic now leads with 5.41 to go, 29-28. Woof! Just like you, yeah. Here we go. Sent through all kicks. Nice kick coming out to Tobolsky. He has at the 15. Angles to his left and is brought down as he crosses the 30 to about the 31-yard line where the Paladins of Paramus Catholic take over first and 10. That was Chris Polk, Larry, with the tackle on the kickoff. First and 10, can't believe he's what the auto, autoizing up there. Back, looks, 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 oh, look throws, incomplete. He had the noble over the middle. And what he was doing, he was trying to talk to him to go a little bit further, hesitate. It was almost like a delay over the middle pattern. And there was plenty of room there. So incomplete. Incomplete. Second and 10. 31 yard line. The Cosmo is in for the Paladins. What do you think? He slips. At the 30, he falls back to the line of scrimmage, brings up a third and uh, 10, John. Well, you know what it was, he slipped, but there was four Crusaders, 88, Cavaluso, 34, DeFranco, 72, and 73, and they were having a little coffee clutch. And he went down and said, I'm gonna meet the dirt and forget about it. Clark is out to the left. Look at this. <laughs> Mazarone is in the slot. Wallach is in the slot to the left. Noble is out there side of him. Nice. Look at his pass. Falls over. And he sudden's clock. And I don't know, John. He fell. It depends where they're going to spot him. First by about a yard and a oh, half. Oh, they got him, yeah. yeah. Rob Control was coming in, John, for the uh, Crusaders. And he was picked up in the backfield by El Lopez. So Lopez can run, he can catch, and now I can now I see he can block because Contral is an outstanding lineman. So this pitch back to Lopez. And Lopez crosses midfield. He does everything, John. And there's another guy who can do it all, number 59. John Matisek on the tackle that time downfield after Mr. Lopez. Lopez, 5'10, 195 pound running back from Woodridge, New Jersey. And it was a quick offense now, John. Quick huddle. No huddle. No quick huddle. huddle. <laughs> Can't believe back. Look, throws. Clock has. Clocks are close to 40. First and 10. They're trying to get them um, this quick tempo, trying to take uh, Burger Cartwright out of a uh, defensive uh, rhythm. It works. It really does work. Well, it works in the pros. It's going to work in high school, right? <laughs> the ball is 
Texans brought the 40 on the 39 yard line. Pitch out to Lopez. Lopez, nothing. Stop. 5 9. Not a dick was down. <laughs> and number 9, Ruoff. And 88, Cavaluso that time. He stopped on a dime. Couldn't make the turn. He lost it five yards. So it's a loss of five. Brings up a second and 15 for the Paladins. And we got everything here. Timeout on the field. Referee. Visual timeout. So much of a breathless. <laughs> Campanile back. This nigga's dead. Throws. Well, that bounce. That Lopez bounce. Lopez catches it. And Lopez gets to the 35-yard line. Okay. <laughs> Go ahead, John. I saw a little hop that time with that ball, but it goes as a catch. Let's check that ball. He was sealed. Let's, let's check that ball for some uh, little brown spots on it, huh? Well, it was a seal. The referee was sealed that time, and a good shortstop move <coughs> and a catch. Balls are shy to 35 Eight yards. yards. Third down. We'll call it seven yards to go. All the time in the world. Uh, 19 uh, rushed out. Throws down. No good. Intended for Chucky Mazzaro. He was defended on the play by uh, Pusnik. Fourth down. So Picnic defends, and it's fourth down, and the Paladins have been punted, and I got a feeling they're not going to punt here. The ball's on the 35-yard uh, line. Fourth and seven. They got to get to the 30-29. the crowd into the game. Well, Bergen Catholic people are standing on this side. Glamis Catholic people are standing on the other side. And they're all Everybody's happy. standing. <laughs> And we still got a whole quarter to go. <laughs> Campanelli's back. Great blocking. Great blocking. Throws that field. Tomazzaro's got it. Touchdown. Touchdown. <laughs> <laughs> Vito Campanelli to Chucky Mazzarone. Touchdown, John. 35 yards that time. And you're looking at fourth and six. And you get 35 yards in the score for Mazzarone. And the, uh, the cash register is continually to jingle. Jingle, 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 jingle. It's now 34-29 for Amos Catholic leads. Point conversion. Campanelli's back. Campanelli looks, 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 throws. No good. Intercepted by Cavaluzzo. But from the no inside linebacker. Yeah, from, well, that's so Keo. The PAT failed. Paramus Catholic takes the lead with 2.13 to go over Bergen Catholic, 34-29. It's everything we said it was, we thought about it, all the writing on the papers and the TVs and the talking in towns, it's exactly what we thought. A great game, it could be the greatest game we've seen, and we still got two minutes, 19 seconds to go in the third quarter, and 12 minutes to go in the fourth. And Larry, the defense has been, you may look at the defense, you have what, 34, 29, 63, point scored. The defense has played a great game. Both defenses. Larry, the defense has been, you may look at the defense, you have what, 34, 29, 63 points scored. The defense has played a great game, both defenses. Wallet's kick comes down and it goes out of bounds. It might have been touched. We have an official up here who's keeping time uh, on the clock, Ozzy Curry from Newark, uh, retired teacher. And he said he's never seen in 27 years a championship game like this. He's seen a couple of games during the season, you might catch something like this, but a championship game he's never seen. Well, you know you have, Larry, you have two of the greatest quarterbacks in, in the state of New Jersey. Could be two of the best quarterbacks in, in the country. There's a quarterback out of, in Pennsylvania that would, Porkowski, I think, that would probably try to battle them out, but they can throw the ball. They're both well over 250 yards passing and more. Under the penalty on the field, we'll be back when they sort this all out. Here's your, on TV, 
Yeah, the antique room here. Yeah, let's get out of the way. This is it. This is the. Uh, to my right is uh, is uh, Chris, and he's the. Uh, Tap the referee. And here's our referee here. The referee can just go wave. on. Tell wave. Wave. Just wave. You're on TV. There you are. And then it's the retired This is just the encroachment here. And encroachment. We, and we have the rest of the uh, Bergen Catholic up here. People up here taking the, uh, doing the clock and whatnot. These are the uh, gentlemen who are helping us up here. Ball's on the 35-yard line. The Rosa hitting the hole and stop. No gain. Now, Frank, the Franco, Brian Perone. Made the initial stop number, seven, stop number 77. He stopped uh, DeFranco for uh, no gain. All right, we're going to change that. We'll give him a half a yard. <laughs> <coughs> Second and ten. Sinicello is out to the left. Fabish is in motion now. DeRosa hands off to Tierney. And Tierney hits the hole. Maybe a yard or two. John? Well, you know what it is? That halftime, they, they adjusted. The running is stopped, and they're going to have to go up top with the arm of Mark DeRosa. So it's third down and seven yards to go. <laughs> when the fans screamed out, it probably will come this way. Right, we'll the little fans will be coming your way. McDermott to the left, Babish to the right. How about the 34? How about the 34? How, how about a little run? What a catch! What a catch! Oh. Dave Cavaluzzo made a spectacular, almost behind the back catch. Oh, first down. What a catch! We've seen it all. We're <laughs> seeing it all. That was a side wind throw. Cavaluzzo goes up and just floors that ball and brings it down for a first down. 12 yards on the just shy of the 50 yard line right in front of us Babbage left McDermott right the Rosa calling signals the Rosa to Tierney and Tierney still on his feet you can't see what they end up <laughs> still moving the pile just moved about four or five yards John well once again a good run by Bill Tierney who's been it's up to like 18 19 carries so far today and that was Mr. Adcock, who's 6'6", 290, making a stop. Oh, so they're giving uh, Tierney, what the, looks like about 25 carries, John? Well, you want to be official, 18 carries. Oh, there I go, I was close. <laughs> <laughs> Seems like he has 100 carries. Every time you look up, he's running. Damage, he's on the wing to the left. The Franco, the big fullback. Oh, oh, nice block by McDermott <laughs> on the outside. I tell you what, Tim McDermott catches the ball, runs nice patterns, and made a nice block on the outside. But the seal block was John Matisic, 59, who knocked out a linebacker and a defensive end, and the 15 yard or 20 yard for a first down. And with that play, we have the end of the third quarter. So we played three full quarters. We got one coming up. Paramus Catholic leads 34 29 over Bergen Catholic for the Division A championship. Well, the start of the fourth quarter. The ball is just down inside the 30-yard line. We'll call it the 29 of Baramis Catholic. De Rosa to DeFranco. And DeFranco plows his way for about seven yards. John? Well, that time, DeFranco came inside with all his friends. Great blocking, six, six yards, and a first, and a second down. Second down, four yards to go. Okay. Pavich is on the wing. Pro set for Tierney and the the, uh, the the Franco. The Franco stops and gets just short of the first down marker at about the uh, 20 yard line. John. About three yards that time, and I'm trying to pick up the uh, the tackler. It's going to bring up a third down and two yards to go for the That first. was number 55 who made the tackle. Orlandi Hagen. <coughs> well, foul 
Alden's exhorting their fans to cheer them on. Third and two. We're in four down situations here. The road to calling signals. Oh, and too much time. Too much time. And too much time. And you have, I see the coach there, Mike Campanile, came running out onto the field, clapping for the clock. Well, DeRosa was looking up and down, looking for the, um, looking at the defense, didn't like what he saw, was audibleizing, and just took too long. And you, you don't see a 25 second clock. No, you don't. Yeah. <laughs> But like you said, two two play situation here, third and about six yards. The road to calling signals. The road to look at the run outside. The Franco and the Franco powers his way to about the ten yard line where he's run out of bounds. Well, about fifteen yards for Mr. DeFranco that time. And once again, the your tight end and your tackle on that side, and you know who they are. <laughs> Number fifty nine, John Madisick, just seals it right off. And a great run. So the ball is on the 13 yard line. They spot it there. <clears throat> That's where uh, the Franco went out of bounds. Well, he started running the ball with Tierney, not the Franco's carrying the, the load. You know, I've been watching on, on the sideline, and Ben Tonin is warming up. There goes Tierney. Tierney, too. And Tierney gets across the 10. He's about the nine. Yeah. John? I got five yards in that play, and you know, I was beginning about the play watching Mr. Bergen Catholic, number 55, Ben Tonin, who's been averaging 12 tackles per game, 44 tackles the last two games, and they could sure use him in the game. That time is on the, on the wing to the left. There goes the front to the outside. It looks what like a shot. Oh, what a touchdown. Oh, what a play. The old stiff arm. Joe DeFranco runs it in from the 13 yard line. And Bergen Catholic takes the lead 35 34. That's a third touchdown for uh, Joe DeFranco, eight yards and a score. And I'll tell you what. He hit number 30 from Paramus Catholic and just bounced off of him and a touchdown. That's Tom McNamara. And McNamara's band? <laughs> what a stiff arm. Oh. Or was it forearm? <laughs> We're going, they're going for they're two going points. For two. They're going for two. The road is going for two. The road looks, looks, throws. What a catch. What a Cavaluzzo. Cavaluzzo. Another great catch. Cavaluzzo. David Cavaluzzo is making one great catch after another here in the second half. And that's a big two-point conversion. So the score, 943 to go in the game. It's for the North <laughs> Division of Parochial A North Championship between Bergen Catholic and Paramus Catholic. They are putting on a show. It is 37, 34. BC leads, PC. We'll be back for the kickoff in just a moment. Stay where you are, don't move. Hmm. They don't give the people or us much chance to sit down and just relax for a second. Rule bangs one, down to the five. Kamilski has 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. Whoa, 35. He was a step or two from Idiosville. Well, like always, you know, the. Uh, Great running attack that time, 30, about 30 yards, 35 yards in a return, and one man to beat for a touchdown. But what else am I saying? Every play is like that today. You know, John, you mentioned maybe off the air on the air, I don't remember, the last team that gets the ball is going to win. It's possible here, you know, it's like those old street touch tackle games we used to play. Sure. The last team gets the ball wins. Lopez. Two yards. Two yards. Tonin's back in, and he's limping on the leg. So they're giving him two. We'll call it second and seven for Paramus Catholic. Nine minutes to go in this game. Hey, John. He's hurt. Tie, tie John. Tie game. 
Well, then you go into OT. Oh, international. I think they play an international game. Put the ball on a 10-yard line or whatever. Yeah, but Illy pitches back to Lopez. There goes Lopez. Breaks one. Breaks two. Ah, it's Breaks coming eight. back. It's coming back. Breaks four, five, six tackles before they get him down at the 25-yard line. But it's all for nothing. They're yeah, we got a clip. We got a clip against Bramus Catholic, it looks like. And they're bringing it all back. A fantastic run by Mr. David Lopez. And Campanile, Mike Campanile, the coach, is really upset about it. He, I'll tell you what, though, they got to keep him under control. He shouldn't be on the field. What a run by Lopez. Fantastic run, but 15 yards from the point of the spot. Well, the seven, 10,000 people that came got it their is. money's worth. It's often with a spot and a foul, brings up a second and 11. Kimberly's back. Look, 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 look. Rolling oh, over the middle. Oh. Noble. That's the play they ran the touchdown again. There goes Noble. He well, bubbles the ball. He bubbles the ball. Cavaluzzo's having a game of his life. And it's his last game, exactly. And Noble was running down the center of the field, right down the middle of the field, like he did in the first quarter when he scored that touchdown. And the ball just popped out, John, just popped out. Well, sometimes as you're running, you don't, you don't tuck the ball away. You're trying to generate some additional speed, and that's what happened. But 40 yards on that pass play, and Camp and Healy is moving up in passing. Another turnover, though. McDermott to the left. Damage on the wing. DeFranco. And DeFranco uh, gets up to the 35, and a flare comes in. Yeah, in, in, that, in that place in line where it always calls a hole. Here we go, 10 yards. It's holding against Bergen Catholic. Moves them back. DeRosa hand off to Favish. Good shot. Favish. Oh, Favish takes a pounding but gets about eight yards. John? Well, I got more than that. I got about 13 or 14 yards, it looks like. It's in spot. You're right. And I'll tell you what, Mr. Favish was trying to show him that he can run and he can hit and he can block for himself that time as he gained about 12 yards on that run. John's doing the statistics here. I think his pen is going to light up and go <laughs> tilt, tilt, tilt. Damage's on the wing to the left, to the right. Seven minutes to go in the game. The Franco jumps over. Look at that jump. Jumps <laughs> over. Who's he talking about the 40 yard line? <laughs> and uh, and the Close to a first down. We're going to see where the mark is, John. I'll tell you what, number 62, Frank Marinuzzi for Bergen that time, had a crushing block on the defensive end of linebacker. A real pancake. Six minutes and 40 seconds to go. Bergen cast the lead, 37-34. Third and one. DeFranco, the workhorse. He's got the first down. Walks to midfield. Ten more Bowling yards. Territory. I'll tell you what, the blocking by the tight end and the tackles today by Burton Catholic in this drive have been tremendous. Outside blocking, sealing off, and a lot of runs. John, I don't know. I, I just get the feeling that maybe, just maybe, the, uh, the line of Bergen Catholic after the whole game of pounding, pounding, pounding is now maybe just getting the best of Paramus Catholic, that big offensive line. It's going to take, the, take it to them. And with DeFranco running, this could be the difference. DeFranco again. There's Look a big hole again. There goes DeFranco. Great spin. Got a 10 yards. 12 yards. They're down to the 35. Another first down. <laughs> And they're going through the left side of the line. 
where you have 59, Matisek, Cavaluzzo, and they're running, running, running. Now, you know, Joe DeFranco only carried the ball four times in the first half. This half, got about 15 carries. And lately, he's been taking 10, 12-yard gallops. Damage, on the wing. Then the yellows out to the right. The Rosal pitches out to Tierney. And Tierney picks up two, three yards. Bring up the second and seven, John. Again, they're just pounding away, as you said before. Perfect example. The Paramus Catholic line right now is hurting. 64 is coming out. I think Mr. Adcock, isn't it? Yep. They've been getting pounded up front. And we said the game will be won and lost in the trenches. In the, and in the fourth quarter. And in the fourth quarter, obviously. 37-34. <laughs> EC leads. There is coming up to the five-minute mark. Second and seven. EC is driving. DeFranco again. And the once again, the outside, crosses the 30 to about the 29-yard line. That time, Mark Fabish had a great block outside to cut off. Gain of about a six yards. <laughs> Two down situation. Oh, you're certainly on that. The <laughs> ball's on the 29-yard line. You gotta gotta feel good if you're a Freddie Stangle. DC. Mike Campanelli and PC's got to hold him defensively for two plays and then try to get the ball back. And what he needs is a touchdown here, though, Larry. Because you need Frank more. Goal. Nice delay, first down. And listening to the crowd, you can tell that that play was the best play of the day. Joe DeFranco on a counter for about five yards in the first down. The offensive line, Ray Ramundi, Ben Cohen, and Angelo, Angelo Ono, John Matisek, Brian Brogdon, Dave Cavaluzzo are doing the job up front. They have taken over and they're pounding the ball down, run after run after run. We are approaching the four minute mark. And I'll tell you why, the linebacker, I mean the, the running backs will be taking out that line for dinner tonight. There's the Frank O again for them. Just waiting. Run. This time they stuff it. Well, stuff about three yards. <laughs> four yards. We're inside the four minute mark. The ball's on the 21 yard line. Yeah, they stuffed him, he got four. <laughs> Looked like they knocked him down and he dragged a few with him as he fell forward. Damage he's on the wing. Road set, Tierney and DeFranco. DeRosa, hands off to Tierney. Tierney what a hit. The hole. Six three. Oh, jeez. I'll tell you what, number 63 that time, Larry. Jeff DeSalvo, we got a flag. There's a flag on the play here, John. Well, <laughs> he was stopped by DeSalvo if they got Paramus Gaffer was hit for a, a personal foul, personal. roughing. And they moved the ball 15 yards. The ball now was on the 10 yards. He had a late hit. That was it. A late hit as they held him up there. The whistle had blown. 15 yards, and that's going to hurt. To the 10. To the 10 yard line. The road is calling signals. The clock is running. The Franco. Two the yards. Franco from two. Picked up two. Second and. Eight. The ball is on the eight-yard line. John? You know, it was 8.14 to go, and in my mind I was thinking, this is something a Bergen Catholic would like, an 8.14 series, 15, 18 plays, and they're doing it. Two minutes, less than three minutes to go in the game. Touchdown here can do it. With a timeout on the field, with uh, 2.59 to go, Bergen Catholic leading 37-34. <laughs> We'd like to give the seniors here for Bergen Catholic, Joe DeFranco is the co-captain. He's from Hawthorne, New Jersey. Ben Tone and the other co-captain from Fairlawn. Eric Ayala from Emerson. Mark Fabish from Ohokus. Mark Ruoff from Ridgewood. Justin Siniello from Cliffside Park. Mark DeRosa from Carlstadt. Tim McDermott from Ridgewood. Seth Damagey from River Edge, Chris Pope from Rivervale, Ron DeBasigli from Hasbrook Heights, Ray Ramundi from Franklin Lakes, 
John Matizak from Fairview, Brian Brosnan from River Edge, and Dave Cavaluzzo from Maywood. Those are the seniors playing here today. We'll be moving on to college next year, John. And I'll tell you what, they, every one of them have left every 100, 150%, everything on the field today in an attempt to win against a great Paramus Catholic team. Second and seven. They are standing <laughs> here. The crowd is standing. Devoto looks, throws. There he goes. Two boys. And that dynamite. was number four, the fourth touchdown for Joel DeFranco. I'll tell you what, normally you'd say turn out the light, the party's over, but 253 is a lifetime. 43-34. Bergen Catholic leads with two minutes and 53 seconds to go. And the pass from DeRosa to DeFranco. Makes Bergen Catholic comfortable. I've not I've seen too much in high school football. It's not over until that clock says zero, zero, zero. And that's a key point. Good. So, so, two minutes, 53 seconds to go in this game for the parochial A championship here in Union, New Jersey. The Crusaders of Bergen Catholic <laughs> take a 44-34 lead over the Paladins from Paramus Catholic. That was five minutes and about 55 second drive and something was, Brent Stengel was looking up in, in the heavens to figure out how am I gonna get a, an offense moving about 17 plays and a lot of clock time. A wish come true for the head coach, Brent Stengel. You gotta hand it also to those people across the, the field for Paramus Catholic. They, they played a great game too. Offensively, they were all they said they were. And great defensive game, believe it or not. They were great plays. Tremendous That's why scores were made, because they made perfect plays. Fumbles, Fumbles, interceptions. That's part of the game. Great hitting, and two outstanding quarterbacks. Ruoff is going to kick. Deep is Fabuski and Merlino. And let's not forget Merlino's run interception is from 90 yards. Kick is high, <laughs> coming from Stavosky. He fumbles the ball, it's running around. <laughs> 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 Ron Deepa Sigley. One of the seniors gets that. Uh, Deepa Sigley. An uh, early Christmas present as the ball pops in his hands. And now the, the situation turns the other way. Two, uh, two minutes. And, Two minutes, 50 seconds, <laughs> we're losing it. Two minutes, 47 seconds. All Bergen County has to do is kill the clock and they're gonna get their second championship and go to 11 and 0. And you know, John, Buddy Stangle said when we met him way back in September, we got a pretty good offensive <laughs> team. 44 points put up today. Hand off to DeRosa, <coughs> lose one man. And he stays in bounds. As DeFranco, we lose here, okay, DeFranco is not back for a couple of yard loss, John. Well, now the clock is down to 215, and you know what? That team, that defense is tired out there. As DeFranco, even though he lost three yards, he bounced off five tacklers. And a timeout. <laughs> Look, look, look at Adcock coming over. You think he's, you think he's had a war? Look at his shirt hanging out. No, oh, it's not over yet. <coughs> you think Madden would like him? Look, oh, God look at him. <laughs> Love him. Okay. Second down, 13 yards to go. The Franco. <laughs> Plows across the 30, 25-yard uh, line. And Paramus Catholic calls another timeout to stop the clock. Seven. Oh, yeah! Yes, throws to Favish. 
Well, you know what? It was a perfect time to call a play, and had he not interfered that time, number five would have had a touchdown, so it was a good play. But they call an interference play, I will see what it's against. <laughs> Interference. It's definitely interference. I thought it's bugging Catholic people. Yeah. It's a game of them. Let the referees call the game. You guys play the game. So the ball's on the uh, 10 yard line. 2 2 to go. <laughs> the Franco has the flag on the field. McNamara slows him up, and the Franco is brought down. But there's a flag on the field. Too much, too many men on the field. It looks like it's against. My conduct against uh, Bergen Catholic moves them all the way back to uh, 25 yard line. First and I guess goal from the 25. The Franco. Oh! The Franco. Down to the 15 yard line. About 10 yards. Tackled and by number 77, Perone. Played a nice game in the, in the trenches there, John. Well, everybody on that field played a great game today. I mean, this is one of the greatest games we've ever watched and ever telecast. Yeah, from beginning to end, it could be. I'm, I'm thinking of the St. Joseph's game against St. Peter's a couple of years ago, but that was the last, the greatness of that game was the last, uh, the last three, four minutes. We're down to one minute to go in this game. Paramus Catholic has the ball. <laughs> I mean, Bergen Catholic has the ball. Tierney has, cuts up the middle, goes to the five-yard line, inside the five, to the four. About 15 yards. So they're going to have to run at least one more play. <coughs> and like you said it before, it's definitely the war in the trenches. At this point, it's been won by Bergen Catholic. The holes are being open. They're tired. 30 seconds. 30 seconds to go. The Rose are calling signals. The Franco again to the outside. And he stopped. <laughs> Look at us, people. Yeah. That's going to be it. That should uh, be it. Let the clock run out. The clock's going to run out. Nine seconds. We're down to seven. It's going to be all over. The Crusaders of Bergen Catholic are again the champions of the yeah. Division A North. And there goes the crowd. They are the champs. <laughs> Final score here in Union. 30. 44-34, Bergen Catholic over Paramus Catholic, and the mob scene will take place. Well, Bergen Catholic, John did it. It was their big offensive line in the fourth quarter, Joe DeFranco behind the big line. They, they took over the bulk of the work and brought them victory. Well, Joe DeFranco in the second half had 20 carries for about 130 yards. And he was the bread and butter man, but the defense came up with time and time again for key plays. And there they are. They're the champions. Both teams are champs out there. Great game. I said it before. When you get a game like this with all the hype, usually the game doesn't live up to the hype. Today, this game lived up to the hype and more. There was everything you want. It was one of the greatest games WCTV has done. 44-34. Both teams have nothing to be ashamed of. Joe DeFranco, Joe, great game. Uh, you didn't carry the ball much in the first half, but in the second half, John Franco and I had you carrying the ball about, what, 17 times, 16 times? Yeah, total of 24 carries, about 145 yards, and only 13 in the first half, so yeah. they went to you, and they opened up some beautiful right. holes, and I'll tell you what, the way I saw you run today, tremendous running, great Thank job. You. How was the, uh, in the second half, did they present any problem to you when you came out in the second half, the running, that's why, uh, that's why you stopped your running? No, uh, in the first half, I was, we ran out of the eye, so I was just basically blocking back. 
And then the second half, we went back to our base offense, where I carry the ball most of the time. And Was that because the uh, the field, the weather, what they were yeah, doing, what? The field. We wanted to run out of the eye, just straight up the middle, because the field's kind of slippery. So. All right, let's talk about the offensive line. We thought, John and I were talking this week, we had a pregame show, that it would come down to the fourth quarter, and the big line, and you would take over. Is that the way you saw it during the week, that by the fourth quarter, the big line, and you would take over? Yeah, we definitely thought our line would blow them off the ball, and by the fourth quarter, they, they knew what plays were coming, but they just couldn't stop it. They knew the plays were coming, but the line just blew them off the ball, and I took over from there. In the third and fourth quarter, a lot of times you started up the middle. You went to the left side behind a couple of your big guys. You're going to bring them up because I saw some pancake blocks that I've never seen before. Give me some of those offensive linemen that were blocking for you today. Oh, John Matisic, Ray Ramundi. Tom Miller came in for Ben after Ben went out. You had John Picknick. Angelo Odo, uh, Brian Brosnan, Dave Cavaluzzo, they all did, did a great job today, great job. When you went in for that last touchdown, what went through your mind that second? Well, I was totally exhausted, and uh, I was just happy we'd get it to go out like this, you know. My last game here at Bergen, you know, I had a great four years here, and after that touchdown, just everything came together, all the hard work that we did all year. I was just exhausted, but I, n I never felt better after that touchdown. All right, we've let you go. One more question. What's for Joe DeFranco now, from now until next September? What do you have planned, or what would you like to do? Well, I want to concentrate on uh, seeing what college I'm going to go to. Now we could sit down and talk to some of the recruiters or whatever, see who's interested, and just take it from there, I guess. Any schools of your choice? What school would you like to go to? Uh, whoever Walker? wants me. I don't care. <laughs> I don't play. Great job, Joe. Thanks. Congratulations. Huh? Thank you. Right. Football. On the sideline here, 40 yard pass, and you're about five yards from the end zone. A couple of guys came up to hit you. You wouldn't go, wouldn't go down, and you went in for a TD. How uh, come? How come? Well, I wanted a touchdown. <laughs> I wanted a catch. I wanted a touchdown. How about that catch you made here? It looked like you caught the ball in back, and you brought it in. What kind? What? What? What was the pattern called? Describe the play. It was. Uh, I think it was Joker boot. And I just went across the middle. I saw a ball behind me. I caught it. I don't know. Oh, just like that. You yeah. just brought it in like that. Made it. And you made a couple of good defensive plays you were in. You yeah. played a great game, offensively and defensively. What do you like better, offense or defense? Defense, probably. Why After today. It? Why is everybody like defense? Everybody wants to hit. You get the hit. Everybody likes the hit. You, but you would like to play offense if you can in, in college? Oh, yeah. Probably, maybe. So what's, yeah. your, what's your plans now, next uh, nine, ten months? Celebrate. <laughs> uh, and then what about school? I gotta decide on that. I don't know yet. What about... Your two-point conversion, the catch down there in the corner, you were about half a foot off the ground, whatever. How did you feel when that ball was coming to you? Oh, well, I knew I was open all day, so I knew I could catch it. It was a good pass. I knew I could catch it because I was open all day. Beautiful catch. Thanks. Super catch. Look at these guys. What are they gonna... At the University of BC State at Champs, huh? Yep. <laughs> is, this, is this your fan club? Yeah, it is. I guess it is. <laughs> Well, congratulations. Thanks, all right. Best of luck. Job, Number one. Good job. <laughs> <laughs> what else? Who else? Uh, well, are we good. here with Ben Tonin? And Ben, before we go any any further, how's your ankle? I heard we saw you hurt your ankle, and how is it now? It's, it's pretty bad. Somebody uh, somebody stepped on it, and I and I heard it pop. And um, every every time I walked on the sideline, I heard it pop. You know, inside. So I don't know. You know. But you, but you went back in. Yeah. Yeah. Heart put me back in there, but uh, it just wasn't working, so they just took me out. You've been averaging 12 tackles a game uh, right through the year, right through your year here. Um, explain what was like coming today into this game. What you felt, what you were expecting offensively and defensively. Well, you know, we wanted it. we wanted to get to Vito the whole day. You know, we had to put pressure on him and get our D backs on the wide receivers. You know, just so we can, you know get him covered so we can sack Vito and uh, we did I think we did that you know we did all right out there not talk about offensively especially in that fourth quarter where the game was in doubt the offensive line took over the Franco was running talk about that a little yeah, bit to Franco you know he's he's incredible he just turned on the juice in the in the second half and I'm really proud of him and you know they told me they dedicated the rest of the game to me and I'm, I'm proud I love all those guys and you know it, this is a moment I'm always gonna remember you know but it's hard being a spectator on the side and never never did that in all my career you know so but you came back in that game and you made a tackle when you came right back i want you to show your helmet to the fans look at this helmet yeah, turn it down a little bit <laughs> look at the top of that this is a helmet right you can explain this is a helmet of an individual that has at least 12 tackles per game right and you love to hit yeah, this shows it look at that helmet 
battle scars. Mm, you should keep this helmet. Are they going to give you this helmet? <laughs> I love it. What it's you, a beautiful thing, I'll tell you. What are, what's your plans now for next year at college? Any, anything, uh, look, you looking at anything in particular? No, I'm not. Uh, just whatever's going to come. Uh, you know, I got wrestling now. Uh, well, as soon as my ankle heals. So, you know, we'll see what happens with wrestling. And, you know, I'm just going to take it one sport at a time. Well, very good. We wish you all the best. Congratulations on the championship and great season. All right. I'm going to do one or two of your matches. Okay. Mark DeRosa, well, not here, about 25 miles away. Mark DeRosa, Mark Fabish. Well, you in the first half threw for almost 250 yards. Did you know that? <laughs> no, I didn't realize that. Congratulations. Really didn't. <laughs> and you caught most of his best. No, you did very well catching the ball. Uh, he put it there for me. I mean, if I dropped it, then that would have made me look bad, so let's, I just caught it. Let's, let's talk about this hat, this chapeau. There's a story to that hat? Uh, well, last week we didn't have, both of us wanted to wear a hat, so uh, so Mr. O'Connor was standing by, and he, I took it and threw it on. It was, you know, a little apropos, PC hat. About a year ago, we stood in uh, your field of an Oradell. We talked about a championship game. He just won. You beat St. Joe's. Any difference now? First you, Mark, and... And the other Mark, the Mark wins here. I think I think there's a, a big difference between this year, mostly because we're mostly because we're seniors, and uh, second of all, because it was against it was against the team that everybody thought they had the unstoppable offense in the beginning of the half. In the first half, we didn't stop them. Then we buckled down the second half. We played good D, and and we came out on top. Why'd you like chasing those wide receivers around? Uh, were they were, were they what you thought, or were they a little different? Uh, the game's over now, as you think back. Well, now I know what people when what people uh what people think when they're trying to catch me running down the field. I've heard, I've heard people that saying that I'm such a jerk because I break tackles and stuff. Now I know what it's like. They're a great bunch of receivers. They're probably the best around. Mark, when you were throwing the ball in the first half, did they present any trouble to you, or did you see exactly what you practiced in week, during the week? Only on that one interception. The rest, the, the rest of the guys were pretty much open, and I knew what I wanted to do. Play action and freeze them up and get outside on the corner and... Let it, let it go loose. <laughs> One question for Mark. Uh, there was a two-point conversion, Mark. 18, 20 yards, and, and I was up there watching you, and I'll tell you what. He was not in the end zone, number one. He was about a half a yard in the field of play. And secondly, that was one of the best hits that I've ever seen a cornerback hit a receiver, and it was totally legal. Now we're going to get his opinion, which is unbiased and really objective. Go ahead. Where I saw it, okay, I had, he was in front of me, and the only thing I could do was hit him. So uh, he was in front of me, and I was right, my feet were on the goal line, so I don't see how, how they could have said that he was in. And I pushed him as soon as the ball got there just to prevent them from getting in. I thought it was a perfectly legal play. And, and he, even if they called the pass interference, I, I didn't think that I was in the end zone at all. There was no pass interference. That was a perfect shot. Ball hit, and then you hit him. And it was at least a half a yard to a yard in the field of play. And that was one of the worst calls I've seen in all the years I've been working football. It didn't matter, so. <laughs> What are you going to be doing now, uh, next year? Any plans? I'm not sure yet. I, I think I'll be playing both in college, really, football and baseball. And, so uh, I'm not really sure. and you, Mark, I know that you're a track star. Keep uh, reading about it in the paper. Are you a track star? I won't go as far as saying track star. I, I do all right. You know, uh, I run the relay, so I rely on the three other kids to do the work. Um, plans for next year for you? Uh, right now, I got, I got, I've been talking to a couple coaches, but... Uh, Right now, I guess I'm leaning towards either James Madison or University of Pennsylvania. We saw, we saw, we saw, we saw, we saw James Madison up there. They were uh, mosing around. Uh, the hopefully, uh, hopefully this isn't the last game Mark and I play together. We'll just say that. We'll just Both say thinking that. about James Madison. Yeah. Why don't you go into the entertainment field? You can do this for a living. <laughs> <laughs> no, man, all we want to say is we'd like to play together next year. Speaking for both of us, I think, I think uh, we definitely want to play together next year. Very good. I want to congratulate you, Mark. Great game. And Mark, again, Great game also. And much. congratulations on your pick of um, all-county uh, defensive back. But to mention that, congratulations on that. Excellent. Yeah, yeah, big and lengthy. Got a great arm, right? Yeah. Tight spirals today, Mark. Well, John, the sun is going down. It's getting dark. Football season finally has come to an end here in northern New Jersey. It's almost uh, the, it's the 12th of December game was postponed today 44 34 Bergen Catholic beat Paramus Catholic it was everything it was billed to be it was better than the height it was a great game might have been the greatest game we ever did I agree with you completely uh, you know watching these two teams play and battle for 12 times 4 48 minutes uh, unbelievable game uh, 
both teams had in excess of probably 500 yards total offense. And these are two of your best teams in the state. I saw Union hanging around here watching this game. Union, who stayed num number one in the state this year. But I would love to see Bergen Catholic and Union play. Let's talk a little about Paramus Catholic. They put up a great game. Vito Campanile, we've seen him twice. He impresses every time I see him offensively and defensively. Throws the ball very well. He's surrounded by great athletes who go out and catches the ball. Lopez, a great runner. Uh, he'll do very well in college, wherever he goes. Very impressed with the Paramus Catholics. They just played a team that was a little better, maybe a little more diverse, a little more balanced. When it came down to the fourth quarter, it was that big offensive line with big Joe DeFranco pounding it out. We're standing here in the mud here, a little not mud, but soft field. This is where you want a fullback and an offensive line. I think you said 8-12 to go in the game. Bergen Catholic had a lead. They took the ball, and they marched down for a touchdown. I think they took five, six minutes off the clock. They had a three-point lead at that point, and you're right. They took almost six minutes off the clock, and they just kept driving down. And at that point, they scored a touchdown to put the game away. You're right. The offensive line, the defensive line for Bergen Catholic was tremendous. They did it all, and they opened up huge holes for Jody Franco. You and I could have ran today in this turf and won. Well, I lost my voice here, and I'm glad I did because <laughs> it better, no better place to lose it. I just love it. It doesn't get any better than this. We have so many people to thank. We do, do want to go through. Again, to the Touchdown Club, the fathers here at Bergen Catholic, who got us here at, the, at Union to do the game. We want to thank them. It was a treat. It was a pleasure. WCTV was 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 a victor here because we were able to bring this game on and, and show it and the people who didn't get a chance to see it today will get a chance to see it on television so we want to thank the fathers of bergen catholic the touchdown club at skiba primarily who was involved in the, the organization for everyone at wctv who put the show on going back to our pregame show which looks like we did weeks and weeks ago we want to thank everybody for there barry gramlitz dr raymond saint who couldn't make it today but helped us with statistics. Bob Vitches, the president. Of course, Ida Studi has been here, and you, me, John. It was a great, great, great season. September 19th, it all started at Hoboken, with St. Joseph's at Hoboken, and it ends here. Who would ever believe it would end December 12th at 13. Union... I'm, is it 13th? Ma, I keep losing time. <laughs> December 13th. December 13th. December 13th here in Union, New Jersey. And you know what? This is one of the best high school football teams in the country that plays on this field. They were fifth in the USA today, and I'll tell you what, Bergen Catholic, after this win today, which I think it's still 44-34, will move up from 13 to probably 8. You're freezing. Oh, yeah, it's cold, <laughs> but I enjoyed every minute of it. I took my jacket off sometime in the uh, second quarter, and I haven't put it back on. So if everyone at WCTV, we want to thank you for following us in football. We go into our winter sports of basketball and wrestling and GSP 168 and everything. We'd like to wish everyone here, because this will probably be our last show of the year, wish everyone a very happy Christmas and, most important, a very healthy and safe New Year. Keep watching Channel 19 WCTV, the video voice of the Pascac area. For John Francola, Larry LaFury, again, the final score. It was a great one. Bergen Catholic 44, Paramus Catholic 34. Goodbye from Union, New Jersey.